Well, how are you? Dan Stein here, President of the Federation for American Immigration Reform. I'm joined by Ira Melman, Media Director at FAIR and longtime FAIR Immigration Reform Advocate. I think most of you know Ira by now. And, you know, Ira, you and I have been at this thing for a long time, decades even. And you wrote a great op-ed in the Daily Caller last week that took a look at this Biden immigration bill, this huge 600-page proposal. And I think you said that people could look through this bill and through thousands and thousands of words, if it boiled down to one word to describe what the Biden immigration reform bill does for the American people, what did you say that one word was? That one word is nothing. It has absolutely nothing in it for the American public. It, It is all about what do we do for the people who broke our laws? What do we do for cheap labor interests that want want more low wage workers in the United States? Uh, You know, what do we do to constrain the border patrol and ICE to make sure that they don't enforce our immigration laws? Uh, You you know, one of the interesting things about this bill and how it compares to say the Gang of Eight bill, which was on the floor, what, seven, eight years ago, uh, at least they made some pretense back then that they were going to try to enforce our laws in the future, that they owed the American public something. Now they've completely dispensed with any pretense of promising that any kind of border enforcement, any kind of immigration enforcement, that they're actually offering none, nothing to the American public. So, I mean, you go through the bill page after page of concession to this group or that group. Sure, you want to come in. Yeah, let them stay. Everybody come on in. No border control. Oh, you got a problem? Sure, you can come in. Oh, young, minor children? Sure. Every, parents? Yeah, sure. Relatives of parents? Great. Not even a head fake, not even a minor concession to the American people at any level. Politically, why would the Biden folks do that? Well, first of all, it, it seems like this bill was written by all the advocacy groups for open immigration. Uh, I, I think essentially what happened is the administration said, go ahead, write something up and we'll introduce it. And so they took everything on their wish list from open borders to just, um, you know, not enforcing the laws in the United States, amnesty for everyone. Uh, it, it reads like the, the wish list of everything that the alphabet soup of groups on the other side have been promoting for years. And the only thing that the Biden administration is talking about here in terms of preventing future mass illegal immigration is addressing the root causes of migration in some of the countries that are sending people to the United States in large numbers. Uh, so essentially what it comes down to is we are going to somehow solve the problems of Central America, the poverty, the crime, the corruption, and that's when illegal immigration will stop. Uh, you know, you can sum that up in one word also. It's hubris. We, we are not going to solve their problems for them. And the United States should not, our immigration policy should not be held hostage to every corrupt and competent regime around the country, around the world. Beyond that, Ira, he's not even saying, look, we're going to do the root causes in Central America and fix those countries. And then we're going to reform immigration so that we actually have the rule of law reestablished. It's just a complete abolition. It's almost as if they want to punish the Trump administration for demonstrating that, in fact, the laws can be enforced and that you actually can control the borders. And they're so upset by that fact that Biden has not only undone what what Trump has done, uh, stopped building the wall and reversed almost every single thing he's really everything, he's single thing that he's done substantively, but he's, he's doubling down going further. And if you take a look at the actual components of the bill, it's written by people who have a very diabolical sense of how you make sure the system doesn't work as intended. I mean, if you look at the various provisions of the bill, you can see whether it's labor protection, uh, detention, adjudications, interior law enforcement, state and local cooperation, deporting criminal aliens, criminal alien removal, asylum fraud. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Not only do they abolish what Trump did, but they take it a step further, a step further and willfully sabotage anything that might work because it might work. Right. Uh, You know, it seems that the position of the administration is that if Trump did it, it is bad and we have to undo it. Uh, You know, the irony here is that he isn't even getting credit for this. He's being attacked by people on the political left for anything that he does that even smacks of enforcement. Uh, You know, you you probably saw the uh, tweet from uh, Forward.us, the Silicon Valley funded group. group that pushes for open immigration, you know, their biggest complaint about the bill that he's introduced is that it doesn't legalize criminals, uh, that there aren't enough criminals who are going to get amnesty. Uh, He's being attacked by AOC and Ilan Omar for just, you know, 
temporarily detaining minors who are coming into the country. Uh, they're going after him on that. So you cannot appease a mob. Uh, you know, Joe Biden probably should learn this pretty quickly, that no matter what he does, he is still going to run afoul of the cra people who are even crazier than he is on this issue. So you know, he might as well do what the American public wants. And, you know, he, he should be listening to actually some of the Democrats who are serving people down in that area of the country in South Texas. Uh, you have the mayor of Del Rio, Texas, shoot a YouTube video begging the president, please stop dumping people into our community. We can't handle it. Uh, you have congressmen, Democratic congressmen from that area saying the bill that you're introducing is a, a prescription for disaster, a recipe for disaster. That is an exact quote, a catastrophe and a recipe for disaster. Uh, he needs to start listening to people who actually represent the interests of people around the country, not to the crazies um, who are being funded by the Ford Foundation and George Soros. Well, you know, certainly most Americans, if this bill were to pass as he introduces it, it would bring in about 50 million plus people over like, what, 20 years or so. It exempts the immediate relatives of permanent resident aliens from any numerical caps. It abolishes the per country caps. It would allow, of course, uh, India and China to dominate the skilled preferences. It's hard to understand how a guy who really, I mean, he owes his election in part to the African-American vote, an extraordinary turnout, and the thanks apparently that they get is for Biden to turn on the spigot for foreign labor displacement from India and China. W what explains this, like, what in this bill is going to help the African-American community at this point in this country? What in the bill is going to help any American community in this country? That That's an even bigger question. Uh, and the answer very simply is there's nothing in there. Uh, and it, look, I mean, Joe Biden was not elected to blow the doors off of immigration. He was elected to deal with COVID, to deal with the, the uh, unemployment fallout that has resulted. Uh, the biggest issue for the American public is getting our lives back to some semblance of normal, uh, getting people back to work and you know what he has proceeded to do now is to create a new crisis on top of existing crises that the country is struggling with so you know he is opening the borders uh, it is only going to exacerbate some of these other problems uh, and add to the add to the problems that he's already dealing with how would you say the reception has been for your op-ed uh, when you publish something in the daily caller do you get much feedback you, you do i mean you, you see what the you know it, we have a social media department here at FAIR, and they do a fantastic job getting it out there. Uh, you know, if you look on uh, the Facebook page, I mean, there are thousands of comments, uh, you know, thousands of people have shared this. So, you know, one of the things I think that FAIR does really well, in it, and I think it's a testament to the integrity of the organization, our professionalism, is that we publish in major publications, not just things like the Daily Caller, but, you know, The Hill, which is kind of a very centrist, um, uh, Capitol Hill oriented uh, news outlet, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we put things on there. Uh, you know, we last time we put something on there, we got 95,000 shares, uh, which is just amazing. Uh, so the, the message is getting out there, people are responding. And that's why uh, these news outlets are willing to publish the stuff that we write, because they know that we do touch a nerve with the American public. And then when the information gets out there, they get looks. And that's what it's all about, getting people to look at your page. Well, last question. I mean, don't you think Biden sort of made a, some major strategic errors by so aggressively undoing what Trump did so quickly and igniting a border crisis and then proposing such an outlandish bill? But, I mean, the 1986 amnesty bill had an eligibility date four years prior to its passage. So it didn't try to set off another tidal wave of people coming in. By setting the date of January 1, 2021, knowing the weak and fraudulent evidentiary standards that would apply, it's, it's no wonder we're starting to see a massive surge at the border. This seems like one blunder after another, Ira. Where are we missing this? Is there something we're yeah. missing? Yeah, I mean, it. I guess you can put down roots in this country, deep roots in this country in six weeks, uh, according to the definition of the Biden administration. It is, it absolutely is a blunder. And, you know, I'll hark back to some of the comments that members of his own party were making after the bill was introduced, a recipe for disaster. Uh, you had, you know, the head of the Michigan Democratic Party saying, you know, this is going to hurt us in the election. But, you know, th this is not what people around the country are, are listening, are looking for. Uh, you know, people in Nancy Pelosi's district may be ecstatic. People in Chuck Schumer's home borough of Brooklyn may be ecstatic. 
But Brooklyn and San Francisco are not representative of the country. The rest of the country doesn't want this. Uh, and he needs to start listening to some of the folks, even within his own party, who are telling him he's going off the rails here. Uh, and he also needs to recognize that he is never going to satisfy the radicals in his party. Uh, anything he does is going to be attacked as not nearly enough. Any slight enforcement that he does is going to raise howls of protest from them. So he might as well acknowledge the fact that he's never going to satisfy those folks and actually try to please the people who elected him. Do you think Republicans are responding properly to this thing? I don't know what they're doing just yet. Um, but, you know, they, they need to be out there letting the American public know that what is going on is going to hurt the American people. Uh, you know, they need to take a stand for a, a firm stand against what the administration is doing. Uh, they need to start pushing back on some of the executive orders. You know, thankfully, a judge ha has issued a now a permanent injunction against the administration's effort to ban all deportations for 100 days. Uh, you know, the the other side was extremely effective at throwing sand in the gears every time the Trump administration tried to do something to enforce the law. Uh, they need to take a page out of that book. Whatever you know, the administration does that goes over the line. Uh, you know, they should be out there saying, "Wait a minute! You know, we, we have as much right to go to court as uh, the people on the other side did for the past four years." So those are the sorts of things that the Republicans and also state governments and local governments around the country can do to demonstrate to the American public that they're prepared to stand up for their interests. Well, that's one of the problems: is the courthouse doors seem to swing open only for certain types of plaintiffs and certain types of clients. As the Trump uh, campaign figured out, trying to litigate the election, you know, if these courts only open their doors to the ACLU when they're challenging regulations in order to weaken them, but courts don't allow legal standing to come and challenge by American citizens when, say, the attorney general or DHS just starts admitting ineligible aliens without limit, pretty soon the whole apparatus bends the wrong way, which is what is happening now. Now, some states have gotten some standing on certain issues like Texas, and they're going to continue to try. But the organizational standing that we saw being allowed during the during the Trump administration was unprecedented, as well as the level of judicial intrusion throughout the process and continuing even today on these asylum regulations. I mean, one of the things people get with FAIR and our associated legal arm, Immigration Reform Law Institute, is a, is a thoroughgoing understanding of what is happening, as well as the viable paths toward challenging them. And unfortunately, it's not symmetrical. Our side has different burdens, but our side can counteract that with popular support. The American people stand with us. Your neighbors stand with us. People agree with us. Don't care how many push polls you look at. People basically have a common sense approach to immigration. They want to be compassionate. They also want it to be done in a disciplined manner that doesn't set off an uncontrollable tidal wave, never ending future immigration. I mean, in, in, in a sense, Biden's proposal isn't simply going to trigger a tsunami, which is like a wave. It's actually going to trigger a sustained, dominant, forever, and never-ending increase in overall immigration, no matter what, pretty much on demand. And so there's everything at stake right now. This is a huge battle. I, I think you and I have been, as I say, in this a long time. Have you ever seen the stakes so high? No. And, uh, you know, we, we have some heavy lifting to do on our, uh, ourselves. Uh, you know, it, the American public needs to understand what is in this bill. It is simply amnesty for everybody. It's open borders down the road. Uh, it is unfettered competition for jobs and wages here in the United States and nothing to protect the interests of the American people. We've seen it before. I mean, we've been through this with the gang of eight, with the uh, McCain-Kennedy bills back in the early 2000s. When the American public finds out what is in it, they do respond. Uh, and we've been able to derail this in the past. I, you know, I suspect that this is even worse. At least back in you know, 2013, 2014, Chuck Schumer was able to stand up on the floor of the Senate and lie through his teeth and say, this is the toughest enforcement bill ever. Uh, but at least he was able to point to something that was going to work to the benefit of the American people. Now they have actually given up that pretense. They, they, there's, there's no fig leaf there. It is what it is. It is open amnesty, open borders. Uh, th there's nothing in it for the American public. And you know whether you break it up into bite-sized portions, it is still a pretty awful meal for the American public to swallow. Well, my last question, I promise, is if you're an average American, how would you characterize their agenda at this point? Now that the mask is off, what's their what are they what are they up to? Why are they doing this? 
Well, look, I mean, it, we've known for a long time that, that this this is all based on ideology. What they want to do is remake America. They see that immigration is a tool to achieve that, uh, and and they're going to do whatever that they whatever they can. So, um, I, I just you know I suspect that most Americans and this you know and I'm talking about all Americans here. Uh, want to see the country remain some semblance of what they have known for their entire lives. Uh, it, it's not a perfect country. There are things that need to change and things we can do better. Uh, but simply to, to torpedo the whole basis of this country, to just um, throw open the borders and say that there is no more America, it's just anybody who shows up here is a member of the body politic, uh, that goes way beyond what most Americans are prepared to accept. And I'm not, I don't think this is going to be the exception. They're going to try Try hard. Uh, they've got a media now that is compliant and will be pushing the message that they want. But it's still going to be hard for them to get the American public to swallow this. Well, as uh, some of our board likes to say, we have a nation to save. So we're going to work hard to do that. And I appreciate you taking the time, Ira. Remember to hit our subscribe button, get FAIR's content. Don't want to miss it. Bash that subscribe button. Uh, to be one of our subscribers and hear all of our important content. You won't want to miss a single installment of FAIR's uh, immigration updates. I'm Dan Stein. Ira Melman joining me. Thanks for listening.